too. Um, you know, we don't know them all that well yet, but uh, they seem very nice. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, good evening, everyone. And welcome to tonight's Board of Ed meeting. The date is Tuesday, May 8th, 2018. And I would appreciate if everyone turns off their cell phones as this meeting is being recorded. Ellen, can you please do our roll call? Thank you, Chairperson Granato. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Here. Mr. Healy? Ms. McCurdy? Here. Ms. Moon? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Here. Vice Chairperson Mr. Hill? Chairperson Mrs. Granato? Here. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative Mr. Justin Bianchi? All present. Thank you. I want to invite a group from Emerson Williams School. It's a daisy troop to come on up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you to all of you. <laughs> okay, Mr. Emmett, I understand we have two recognitions tonight, too. We do. We, um, actually, if we could have uh, Mrs. Galavan and the rest of the daisies come up, please. We'd love to see you at the podium. <laughs> <laughs> That was just a rehearsal the first time you came up. <laughs> well, thank you for welcoming us this evening. We're very honored to be here. And we want to give special recognition to our DAISY troop. These are first graders from Emerson Williams School. They are responsible, intelligent, caring, creative, fun-loving girls. And they're growing up to be wonderful leaders and responsible young women in our community. Uh, we'd like to introduce them to you. We are, or here is Willa and Tiffany, Lydia, Bridie. We also have Ariana and Sarah, Caroline, Jacinia, and Olivia. And I'm sure you'll be seeing much more of them around town. We are Troop 10300. And we very much appreciate all of your support in the school systems at Emerson Williams and all you do to help us at the Board of Education. So we're gonna tell you a little bit about what we do and what we've been doing this year. This is our first year as daisies and we're looking forward to bridging to become brownies next year. My name's Lauren McPhail. I'm also one of the leaders along with Gina and Sam and Mary. Um, this is all our first year as leaders, too, so even though there's nine girls and four adults, we do sometimes feel outnumbered. Um, so some of the fun things that we did this year, uh, we started our troop in December, and we decorated Christmas ornaments and gave them to a local nursing home. We also dropped off items at the local food pantry for the holidays. Um, we also have been learning throughout the, the school year about how to care for animals and also how to care for ourselves. So we had a representative from the Humane Society come in and we learned all about how to take care of animals. And um, part, of, part of what we did afterwards to follow up on that was to donate uh, animal supplies to the, uh, the uh, Humane Society in Newington. So we donated food and toys and things like that for the animals. Um, we also, in practicing care for ourselves, uh, focused on teaching the girls how to do meditation, how to calm our bodies, how to relax, uh, and how to sort of take time, care for ourselves. Last night, 
we made meditation jars at our meeting, which were uh, water and corn syrup and glitter, and you turn them upside down, and they you watch the glitter settle, and it's very calming. So that was a big hit. Um, one of the other fun things that we did was we um, cleaned up the wood parcel in town uh, with Senator Murphy, and we look forward to doing lots more fun things in the community next year. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gina, how old are you? What grade is this? First grade? Mm -hmm. That's so cute. Thank you. We have another recognition? We do. If I could please have our friends from Hanmer School come up to the podium. Good evening. Uh, we're going to start with a special report from our hand Hoot. So please direct your attention to the screen. Good to go? Okay. all been inspired by the book Wonder by R.J. Pollock. The message written between all of the pages is that when given the choice between being right or being kind, choose kind. At Hammer School, we are respectful, accountable, safe, and we make a difference and we choose kind. Here are some of the ways we have demonstrated that so far this year. We created an emoji scarecrow display on Main Street that addressed the importance of recycling and reusing. We collected money through Trick or Treat for UNICEF. We raised money for children at CCMC by wearing pajamas to school. We raised money for ALS by voting on our favorite teacher's holiday attire in a penny war. We collected 122 pounds of candy for the troops overseas. We wrote Valentine cards to veterans and thank you letters to members of our community, including police, fire, and ambulance workers. We wrote cards to children who were hospitalized during the holidays, and we collected food for our food bank. While this school year is coming to an end, our good deeds are not. While we are here today to invite you to participate in one of our last acts of kindness this year, the Kindness Rocks Project. On June 15th, which is our field day, each student at Hanmer School will be painting a rock with a message of positivity, a kind word, phrase, quote, or image that can help to brighten someone's day. These will be placed all together in a permanent display in front of Hanmer School. They will form a heart to symbolize the impact of changing time. Through this interactive display, we will experience how kindness is a boon. It's an easy thing to pass on and it often comes back. So, if you're not busy on June 15th and would like to make a difference, come on over to Hammer and choose kind of us. You won't regret it. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. I can't change the world with my own two hands. Make it a better place with my own two hands. And... Thank you. So that was a special report. Um, Sophie Adams, who's an anchor for our weekly broadcast, who put that together with the sixth graders. Um, 
and the act of kindness that she was referring to is displayed in front of you, some examples that were created by sixth graders in preparation for June 15th. The idea is that by adding a small message of positivity, no matter how small, it could really brighten someone's day. This is a national project that has a lot of different installations in many different forms around the country, and lots of people pick up on it. You might have found them at Broad Street Green in a tree. I've heard that they're there. I heard they're in parks all over. Um, but Hanmer would love to participate and make our mark too and help one another. I have some friends with me, Miss Talia, Miss Olivia, Mr. Jaden, and Miss Salvira, who have some more words of positivity and hopefully they'll brighten your day. These are some inspiration, inspirational quotes that are gonna go on some of our rocks. Okay. Be your own biggest fan. It never rains forever. Be mindful. Believe there is good in the world. Persist. Instead of why me, say try me. Dare to dream. You are perfect the way you are. When you forgive, you heal. Let your light shine. Love deeply. Now is the best time. Inspire. Make a wish. Laugh. Be a Fruit Loop in a world of Cheerios. The best is yet to come, and smile. Smile, see the light in others. Rock on. There's. <laughs> There's something in you that the world needs. Be grateful. You are the author of your own story. You belong. So again, this is an invitation for the community to join us. We have more than enough rocks that were donated by Cedar Mountain Mulch uh, in Newington. They were so gracious in their um, donation of about a ton of rocks that my husband so nicely moved for us. <laughs> and um, we're excited to um, to uh, continue with this initiative that Mrs. Greer has brought to our school. So pause in, first of all, I would like to thank Mrs. Weaver for putting this together. Um, the pause in her voice was because this was absolutely a, a team effort. And although I um, brought the idea of choosing kind to our PBS team as well as to Hamner School. I think it was really important the fact that it was already started at Hamner School. We talk about being accountable, respectful, and safe and the fact that we make a difference. And I think the added word that we all agreed on was the idea of choosing kind, making it something that you intentionally set out to do. When we decided on the book We're All Wonders, which was our one school, one book, the idea was to bring us all together to understand the importance of that very small thing, to making a choice to not just solving the problem, but solving it in a kind way. So I thank her. I thank this fantastic representative of sixth grade class um, and all the people at Hamner School, our entire community, that really decided that that was the one piece that we were really gonna focus on this year, that idea of not just making a difference and not just being problem solvers, but doing it in a kind way. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Hamner School. We just had a discussion last week on our strategic plan about teaching um, social and emotional skills. So thank you for showing us that. I've been asked to have the rocks handed down this way because they belong out at Hanmer and not on our desk. They should be seen, though. They're kind of neat. They are very they are cool. Really cool. Oh, they're yeah. cool. Oh, no, this they're is really Throwing. <laughs> yeah, no throwing. John, you're not all. John, you hogging yours? No, we passed it. Down. Okay. We were, we were the first ones to let it go. That's right. <laughs> Reluctantly. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, could I just. Okay. Okay. Thank I, you. I would just like to say um, to the students who came up tonight, um, and especially those who spoke, I really, really appreciate. Um, 
your, uh, your bravery at speaking at the podium. I know that's not easy. So um, thank you very much for <coughs> providing us with a great start to our meeting. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of our regular Board of Ed meeting on April 24th, 2018. Anyone see any corrections? Okay, may I have a motion to approve them? So moved. A second? Second. Okay. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Those minutes are approved. So now if there's anyone who wishes to come up and speak at our podium, please state your name and address and may I remind you that we have a five minute limit. Okay. Mr. Emmett, you have communication to share? I do, thank you, uh, Mrs. Granado. Good <coughs> evening, everyone. Uh, just a reminder that uh, next Tuesday marks the date at which the town council must allocate the budget, so we're certainly in the final throes of uh, preparation for that. Uh, as we know, Mr. Healy and Mr. Hill are up on the hill this evening uh, dealing with the state budget, so we wait to uh, see what's coming from the state. This week marks Teacher Appreciation Week across the country. Here in Wethersfield, we're fortunate to, uh, to have a team of dedicated and compassionate teachers who strive to ensure that our students receive the best possible education. To all of our Wethersfield teachers, we say thank you. Thank you very much. In addition, tomorrow, School Nurse Day takes place. Uh, in an official statement, Governor Malloy states that School Nurse Day recognizes the important role nurses play in our schools and expresses his gratitude for the outstanding dedication to the success and wellness of Connecticut's future generations. And again, I can't say enough for the professionalism of our nursing staff here in the Wethersfield Public Schools. Congratulations go out to Silas Dean for an exceptional effort on the Cass Middle School of the Year competition. We finished as the runner-up, number two. Um, the school was lauded for its student-centered approach in support of the leader-leader model. Uh, students, staff, and parents at Dean have a lot to be proud of. The Teacher of the Year process has kicked off. Um, the annual Teacher of the Year nomination process actually has begun for the selection of next year's Teacher of the Year, and we expect to announce the winner in early June. Uh, with regard to negotiations, uh, we are currently engaged or will be engaging in negotiations with three bargaining units. We're currently uh, working with secretarial and paras. Nurses will be commencing shortly as will custodial and maintenance. Uh, please check your calendars for upcoming dates if you serve on a negotiating committee. Um, some good news here, the State Department of Education has asked the district to attend a meeting before the State Board of Education to share what we have done to increase student achievement at Hammer School that has placed it into the School of Distinction category over the past two years. Uh, that meeting will take place on May 30th uh, up in Hartford, so I'll have more for you on that as it uh, approaches. Uh, last week I attended the CAPS Assessment and Accountability Committee meeting. Uh, that is a committee that I serve on and have done so for the past three years. Uh, we discussed a variety of topics including some potential changes to the accountability indices that the districts are measured by. Uh, many in attendance expressed concern about yet another change to that system and that change or those changes would make comparing growth over time much more difficult to measure. I will say that the State Department of Education has been responsive to our concerns in the past in other areas and uh, they certainly value the input of the superintendent group. A spring concert, uh, recognition ceremonies, dollar for scholars, uh, academic awards, family events are popping up all over on the calendar. Please refer to your district website or the district website for dates and times and also your calendars as well. Um, we've received notice of potential hurricane and disaster relief funding provided by the United States Department of Education. Mr. Kazaka and I participated in a conference call this morning with the uh, State Department of Education to outline this application process. Uh, as is often the case, the turnaround time on this funding is very short. Uh, we received the application last Friday and it's due on May 15th. So we are currently working on that. The total available funds will be determined through the submission of our student data as, uh, will, and will be weighted for both ELL, special ed status, as well as time students have spent in the district. And with that, that's communications. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments from Michael? John? Why would we have any eligibility for hurricane funding? We, uh, with regard to um, Hurricane Maria specifically, we saw an influx of students come in from Puerto Rico. Uh, the last count was a total of 16 students. 
and as we have brought the students in and they've been with us um, over the course of the year, we are eligible for funding. Um, could I just follow up? Oh, Holly? Um, so in the event that there were um, students then from any, who had to come from any relief or from any hit area, like for instance, the Houston area Correct. or Florida or anything like that, that Correct. would just help us absorb our costs a little or Correct. offset our costs? Exactly. Okay. We're talking about the natural disasters, Harvey, Irma, Maria, and the California wildfires. Oh, wow. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? All right, thank you, Michael. Okay, so under action items tonight, um, we do have quite a few motions. John Morris, would you please read motion 6A for us? Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve the superintendent to submit a grant under the RFP for a family learning program, a two-generational learning for adult education for the time period July 1, 2018 to June 30, 2019. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Well, I, I'd like to read the objective that was in the grant because it is um, it's so important, and I've had had the opportunity to go down and visit um, at this family um, learning program. So it gives 20 families access to a free high quality family literacy program which combines English language learning, early childhood education, workforce development, and parenting education in one central location with the ultimate goal of reducing the achievement gap amongst ESL students. The family learning program objectives are to recruit and retain 20 families who will have a four point gain or more as measured for pre and post testing. The family learning program also seeks to measure and improve employment status of our families. One program supports the goals of building an educated and competitive Connecticut workforce while helping adults acquire skills and knowledge necessary to obtain employment and become full partners in the educational development of their children. Um, and I vis as I said, I visited a couple of times. It is a fabulous um, setup that they're working on and this would get it to continue. Any other discussions? Okay, Polly? And this is a, um, uh, basically, this has been, uh, there's a continuation mm -hmm. of a grant that's been, uh, that we've yes. had before. Okay, so we really have to reapply every year then for it. Right, and we okay. do have the person who will be collecting data on this. Right, too. That right. Came with the Harper right. Foundation grant. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll have them vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that motion passes. Um, 6B was going to be Kevin. I think I have it right here. So Kevin, move, not Kevin, uh, the recommended motion, move that the Board of Ed approve the attached proposed schedule of the regular Board of Education meetings for the 2018-2019 school year. So moved. Okay. Second. Any discussion on this? John? Yeah, I just have a um, curiosity question. We're scheduled to meet on Christmas Day? Yeah, as it gets closer, Jen will likely have to cancel All right, that one. So I just, we just <laughs> <laughs> so cancel your plans. You can drop your gifts bell. off at the house before. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, we this is a standard second and fourth Tuesday of of the month. So as these dates come up, um, we will uh, look to cancel and then reschedule as needed. Well, I know we're dedicated. <laughs> <laughs> Committed was a better choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6B passes. 6C, Elaine? Um, move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve a revised policy 5300, which states it revised high school graduation requirements. This came back from the, um, the original, we, the state wanted us to go to 25 credits and from 21.5, but the state didn't have the money to fund the classroom teachers that would be needed to have more classes to achieve 25 credits for each student. 
So they pulled back their funding and they pulled back their requirement. So um, that's why we are having this policy. It needs to be approved tonight. Okay, is there a second on this? Second. Okay, any other discussion? Michael? Yeah, I just w wanna be clear with this one. This is not one that I'm really fond of, quite mm -hmm. frankly. I don't think optically it, it looks good. You know, we wanted to kind of get ahead of the curve with where the state was headed with graduation requirements. And, you know, the state has kind of kicked the can down the road year after year. And it's, you know, this graduating class it starts with, then it's the next graduating class and then down it goes. The reality here is that our students are still going to have opportunities um, to engage in rigorous coursework. They'll still have multiple um, electives. And the vast majority of our students, even with a 22.5 credit um, uh, graduation requirement, will far exceed that. Mm -hmm. We just need to make sure that we are taking care of our students that are going to get to that cusp where they're gonna have to get to just that 22.5 mark to make it to the 25 mark where I don't have the staff available to offer the sections to cover those courses for kids. It's just, it's not doable and it's really disingenuous. So I wanna make sure everybody in the public is well aware of the fact that we still have um, the expectation of high quality instruction. Okay, anyone else? Okay, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? So motion 6C passes. John Cassio, would you read motion 6D for us? Absolutely. Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve to engage in phase one school study towards long-term capital improvements program. A little bit of background, uh, we discussed it at our last meeting, but our facilities and maintenance committee has met with the planning firms of Colliers International and the engineering consultants of Malone and McBroom to discuss a baseline for Wethersfield's elementary schools and middle school to determine the district's needs. The committee is looking to implement phase one plan of study, which would develop a 10 year enrollment projections and would conduct capacity and utilization studies of all existing schools to determine current and future space deficiencies. Second. Okay. Any discussion on this? Any questions? We have our representatives here too. Okay, all right, so we'll move on. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6D passes, thank you. Okay, motion 6E, Ginger. Move that the Wethersfield Board of Education approve a memorandum of understanding with the Town of Wethersfield for the transfer of school custodial functions from the Board of Education to the <coughs> Town of Wethersfield. Second. Okay, any discussion on this? Holly? I just uh, wanted to make a couple of clarify, or just clarify a couple of things. First of all, under um, Appendix A, where one of the functions is carpentry, and, um, and, and also a list of uh, custodial duties, electrical work, plumbing, HVAC maintenance and operation. I just wanted to make sure that including in that was basically all maintenance, such as painting or any type of um, uh, anything that would, is continued, would be continued um, with what they're do what's being done now. It, I just didn't see whether it was um, spelled out. Yeah. So is that the we, case? We don't have a painter. Okay, but that would be yeah, no. that would be something that mm -hmm. would be um, included. So it's Does basically any kind of general update. They do. Type thing. Right. They would be okay. Yeah, okay. And then the other question I had was, uh, at the bottom it also refers to the, um, uh, the CE, CSEA, um, SEIU Local 2001 um, Union, um, the employee, it would be one employee that would come from, uh, that would be included in this agreement who would move over mm -hmm. as a, to the town? Yes. Okay. And that's the, the individual who presently works for, is, um, works in the custodial they're, they're area or works for uh, the maintenance, or for, works for Fred. 
Is that that's the administrative? No, the the, the position that is currently um, we're preparing to interview for would mm -hmm. be a supervisor position of maintenance and custodial. Okay. It would be a town position. Right, right. Okay, and then this individual would then, um, in, would in, instead of, because there would be no need for it, in, uh, in the Board of Ed would then be a, become a town employee. That is correct. Okay. That's correct. All right, that's all I needed. Okay. okay. Diane? What are the, the budget implications are, of this? Are we paying the town, or how is this affecting our budget and the town's budget? Ginger? Um, I can give you a little bit of background on that from the shared services um, standpoint. Um, as you all know uh, from earlier reports um, this year, we, the shared services committee originally said this is a great idea, let's combine, let's do this. And then on advice from um, various people including the town manager, we decided that it was going to be too expensive to do, that it made sense from an operational and um, synergistic standpoint, but not from a monetary standpoint. Um, we were asked to reconsider that at a meeting on May 1st, and we're told that um, in order to um, alleviate our concerns about the additional expense, that all expense except the base salary of the um, custodial supervisor, which we currently have budgeted um, at $80,000, that all additional expense for overtime and everything else would be picked up under the town side of the budget. So our um, exposure, if you will, is capped at 80 grand plus benefits. And then the rest will be picked up by the town. So all these custodians, are, all our custodians are now gonna go over and be no. town employees? Not immediately. But when they do, is there going to be a transfer of funds between the, the Board of Ed, the allocations that we have in our budget, to the town budget? That will ultimately happen, yes. And that's going to be effective at the sign of their new collective bargaining agreement? Mm hmm okay. And has the union been notified that this is going to be? Yes, they have. The place? They have, Diane, yes. And am I understanding it correctly, the only the um, custodial supervisor will be the only one on our payroll in time. Yeah, and eventually all, all, eventually all of these positions will shift over to the town. Except our custodial, Our custodial and our maintenance, even our maintenance supervisor oh, okay. will ultimately I wasn't sure if that over. was one mm -hmm. we were keeping. Okay, yep. thanks for the clarification. John? Yeah, the, uh, the thought behind this when it initially came out, just so I think we discussed it, um, was that it was going to be more of a community effort. It was going to be Weathersfield, not the Board of Ed, not the Town Hall, and it was going to encompass Weathersfield's needs. That was what generated us to get into this talk. Um, so that's the, that's the motion moving forward where, you know, the movement is to uh, have a little bit more um, role and understanding of uh, custodial needs. And you know, as we grow with this idea and thought, there's, it's not gonna be perfect immediately. People need to understand that because we're already delayed in, in the hiring of this particular person. Mm -hmm. And our current uh, individual is uh, leaving shortly. So we thought there would be a transitional period where the new person that we were gonna hire would be able to shadow the one that's leaving. I don't know if that's gonna happen. So that's one of the concerns I think we had at the committee level uh, at shared services that that was really something that we're going to have to work on. But saying that, I think um, those that are behind it understand it and they will do their best so that it'll move forward in a positive way so that you know the, the issues that are concerning uh, over the summer that we do in our schools get accomplished. So. I think you know we did bring a lot of that right, Ginger, to the table when we had that discussion. Yes, we had a pretty extended discussion about whether the things that we normally do during the summer will, in fact, happen this year, and um, they will happen. It it may be a 
a little bit of a short-term uh, logistical nightmare, but it because of the change in um, leadership for the custodians. But it will all happen, and the schools will be gorgeous on uh, opening day. And the other thing is that the the custodians will not lose any identity in the schools. They're still going to be Board of Ed employees. They're still going to have their same school. They're still going to have the same duties. It's just going to be a different administration, so to speak. Um, eventually, they're not going to be Board of Ed. Eventually. But I don't know when that eventually is going to take place. But right now, they're Board of Ed employees. John? Do I correctly understand the eventually is when the next contract comes up? And that's next year, as I recall? That's correct. So this panel will then take over that responsibility for that negotiation? That's what will happen. I think with this negotiation, John, my understanding would be we would do this in collaboration. And that's not outside the norm of, of you know, typicality. What we do when we do custodians now is town sits in with us because there's a pension component that, right. that the town oversees. So I don't see that as a, uh, you know, as a stumbling block. You know, from my perspective, um, you know, I'm going to be very upfront. I expect our buildings to be clean. I expect them to be safe. I expect them to be well maintained. And I expect that if something needs to be done, there'll be a level of responsiveness there. That's, uh, I think, a very simple and realistic expectation. Um, I think that we have a custodial and maintenance staff that is well versed, they're seasoned, they know the buildings very well, and I think that they will ultimately work um, collaboratively to make this work. Um, we've done shared services with the IT, it's been successful. I see no reason why we can't make this work. I also see within the scope of the MOU, if we're not happy with this arrangement, we have the ability to, to revisit it, uh, look to fix it, and if it's not fixable, then we, we exit it. Um, the bottom line is I wanna make sure that our kids have what they need to succeed. I also wanna say too that the intent with this um, arrangement is not to reduce jobs. You know, when I talked to the union, that was one of the concerns right up front. You know, oh, you're going to cut jobs. That is not the intent. You know, we ran lean this year with our custodial staff. We were down a position um, through the budget reductions this year. That position is in the budget for next year. We've had several retirements that we have actively looked to fill. Uh, I met with Fred today. I have a um, custodian that's going to be going out on medical leave, and we're already talking about making sure we have a sub in for the summer so that we can get that building up and running. In addition to that, we hire our summer help. That is in process right now. You know, we can't afford to wait. As um, was mentioned by Mr. Cassio, we are running behind. I mean, typically speaking, we would have already interviewed. We would have had uh, that transition plan in place. Right now, as it stands, we are looking at uh, interviews for a total of five candidates uh, this coming Friday. Um, I've already met with Sally Katz and Stephanie Asplund, Trent Donahue's been involved as well, um, to get going on those uh, particular interviews. Um, what we typically do on the school board side is we involve the union in terms of the, um, uh, app, the process of interviewing. That is not changing. I will have a union rep on the interview committee on Friday. So. Um, again, I think there'll definitely be growing pains. It's certainly something that we will work hard to make successful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Diane? This is, I'm glad to see this is finally coming to fruition. Um, this has been a long time coming. 30 years ago when I worked for the town, Lee Erdman tried to do this. Um, and for several years we worked on trying to do this. So it's, um, it's a long time coming and I think it's the way um, that municipalities and boards of ed are going to be moving towards in the future. Um, and having coming from another municipality who did this um, and shared these services, um, I think it's cost effective and it will work out to the benefit of everyone involved. John? Just so that everyone does realize, um, there won't, we're not going to see a cost savings with this transition right now. We're looking at more of an efficiency in what we're doing. Um, and eventually we're hopeful that uh, when it does get its legs and move forward, we'll begin to see savings. But right now, uh, we're not going to see, you know, uh, a, a big saving, so to speak, at the end of the day. But I think it's a uh, it's something that you know we as a board and town have been looking at so i'm um 
supportive of this mm -hmm. idea. Um, and we'll do our best to make it positive for everybody. Anyone else? Did we second this, Ellen? I did. Oh, you did? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, if there's no more discussion, we'll have a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All oppo any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6E passes. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, we have the first reading of the proposed update to policy 5700 on student discipline. Um, do we have any questions or comments? That was quite a lengthy read, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. um, any questions? Yeah, if I, if I could, Madam Chair, this uh, is an update of our current shipment and movement policy. Um, now that we're working with the shipment and movement policies, the way we've been able to do it is we can do the red line. So Deb incorporates all of the, the red line changes so you can actually see what's being changed. Um, this is um, law based. It's under the student section, and uh, I certainly support its passage. This is our first reading. Correct. Any other comments? Okay. All right, so we'll move on. We also had a first reading of the proposed update to policy 9530 the official duties of the treasurer. So can the treasurer speak up about this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, the reason why we're <laughs> making the change. <laughs> All right, do we have any questions or comments on this? Well, I could share a little because um, I did the 9,000s before um, in our way back about six, eight, seven years ago. And we do not have in our set of um, bylaws a treasurer, so uh, the policy committee um, was thinking that we will be voting to take out the whole po the whole uh, position of treasurer because we're okay with a secretary slash vice chair that works in, okay. in the state statute. So um, that's Maybe why the, the salary we'd say. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only that's the only thing is when I read it I said we don't have a treasurer so and we just wanted to bring to it. Well, it yeah. Yes, this is vote to eliminate it in the next read. I believe Mike, right? Yeah, that's correct. Read. That is correct. Um, because we don't want a policy in there that we don't have. You know, people saying, "Oh, but you do have a treasurer." If they pull up treasurer in that search box. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other comments? Okay, so we'll move on, and we'll do our reports from um, our chairs. So, policy and planning committee. Speaking of all that, Polly. <clears throat> um, Yes, first of all, the minutes were included in your packet from our uh, April 26th meeting. Uh, and really, the, the um, items that we discussed and passed on were uh, the, the uh, 5700, the student uh, discipline, and also the um, 9530, uh, the official duties treasurer for uh, the board's review. Uh, the other thing um, that we uh, will be working on at our next meeting is reviewing the um, uh, policy 3300, which is purchasing, and we want to make sure that um, we cross-reference that with, uh, with the uh, CABE, well, it wasn't the CABE, but it was the previous board policy, uh, because this board, um, had made some uh, changes to it. There were some additions. And, and also, um, a, we have, over the last couple of years, finalized a, um, a, a, a purchasing pol policy, or what do we call it? Pol purchasing procedures, right. yes. Right. Um, so that, that uh, were developed by um, uh, Mr. Kazaka and the business department, so we want to make sure there's no overlap there. OK, so we will do that at our next meeting. Okay, thank you, Polly. Shared services, Ginger, we already discussed it a little, but tell us all about it. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's basically, we spent the whole meeting talking about the motion that we just approved to the, for the combination of the, um, the custodial departments. And as John mentioned, you know, everybody was very much behind the, the, the synergistic moving forward of um, the combination and the long-term gains that that will afford us. Um, we were a little concerned about the short-term pain that was going to be involved in it, both uh, financially and um, uh, Mr. Emmett was very kind not to point out that he had, you know, 
two applicant pools that he basically had to throw away because the plans changed a couple of times. Um, and now we're under the gun and we're, we're gonna get it done right, but we're gonna have to get it done right and fast at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but that was basically it. There was, um, as I said, the, the council asked us to revisit it. They felt very strongly that we should move forward. Um, they, um, because they knew we were concerned about the financial aspect, they decided to absorb the financial increase on their side of the budget, um, which was, you know, I'm always in favor of them paying for our stuff. So <laughs> um, that sounds like a great idea to me. Um, the um, I, the one other thing I just wanted to point out is that um, we did, the, the board people on the Shared Services Committee did receive an apology from my co-chair of that committee, uh, Ken Lesser, who realized that we had been uh, sort of swung back and forth a couple of times, and he apologized for the, uh, for the resulting speed that we were going to have to move with now. And that's it. Thank you. Any questions for Ginger? Thank you, Ginger. Okay, in our wellness committee, Diane? Um, we met last week and we had a rather good discussion with Hal Evans about security, mm -hmm. um, different protocols and so forth in the schools. And um, I think we came away with a better understanding and I think he came away with a better understanding of what some of our concerns were. Um, and I think when school starts up again and we start up the committees again in the fall, we'll continue yeah. that discussion. Any questions for Diane? Diane, it was a great meeting. It's amazing how much security is in the buildings mm -hmm. and how many issues have to come up and be covered. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so meeting schedule. We have a special Board of Ed meeting on five, May 9th, 2018 at six o'clock and another special Board of Ed meeting on May 11th at two o'clock. WEC is meeting on May 14th at 4.30. Policy and Planning Committee is on May 14th at 5.30. Is that still on, Polly? Yes. Student Program and Services is on May 15th at 6.30. Correct Council, May 16th at three o'clock. Oh, that's their annual meeting. Yeah, actually, I think that's been changed to uh, the morning. Yeah, that's the okay. Yeah, <clears throat> that's at seven thirty a.m. That's why I used to go, pal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I no, was, I was all, I was all in until okay. now. No, I'm going. <laughs> so that's at seven thirty a.m. Okay. <laughs> Finance and Informational Management Committee is on May twenty second at six o'clock. All right. Is there any unfinished business? I just have a question. Um, sure. Mr. Emmett, on yes. uh, the special board of ed meeting five nine tomorrow night. Yes. Is that executive session? No, I expect at this point okay. in time that that is open to the public. Okay. I have not heard yet from uh, the individual requesting the hearing, okay. but I'm assuming at this point in time that it is uh, a public uh, meeting. Okay, thank you, sir. And we expect it to be lengthy. Mm -hmm. uh, I would imagine it would be yes. John? Yeah, I, I don't know if I, it's unfinished business or not, but do we know if the town council has approved uh, our recommended motion um, to engage in phase one? I know they were meeting about that last night as well, as well as the uh, custodial issue. Do we know that both of them? I didn't been... hear anything. Anybody hear anything? No. And usually. They met, they met Monday, didn't they? No, I think, don't they meet off weeks from us? They, uh, they met uh, yesterday. Last yeah. night, yeah. yeah they just approved, to, approved the MOU last to, night. To yeah. build on what you said, Mr. Cassio, um, with regard to the phase one um, component, we did meet with town leadership uh, about that and explained our plans in an effort of you know being transparent and, and looking to move forward and engage them in the process. So what we talked about in terms of the funding for this phase one would be the utilization of the 1% reserve fund. So was under the impression that that would be going to council. Um, I don't know if that's happened. I'll certainly find out. Okay. okay. And the same thing, if we could just find out in uh, an update on Friday regarding the custodial, uh, the shared services issue, if they approve that particular. They did. They did. They that, did. That, that they was approved, approved last night. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to recap, if you've got that, and that, of course, is the numbers off the asking you to do it off the top of your head, but approximately 
correct me if I'm wrong, was there, what was, um, the, what would the charge have been or the cost have been going back to the, um, uh, the, the uh, district, um, you know, phase one of the uh, plan? Oh. oh, it's right here, I have There it. was a. There was a, a range. Yeah. 75 or something. Yeah, the range for phase one was oh, 75 to 95,000. Oh, I only have the for, first for two phase phases. One? Mm -hmm. phase one. Oh, okay. And then, um, because what we have in our 1% uh, fund is 60. Is, is yeah, 60. it's 60. So we, um, we could, depending on, on the cost of it. Okay. Okay, any, any other unfinished business? All right, then is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that we have a five minute limit. Okay. All right. Are there any board comments this evening? John? Absolutely. Uh, if Board of Ed members can look around the room and see all the posters that are up. These are done by the sixth grade classes uh, in our district. Our elementary schools, uh, inclusive of Corpus Christi, will be coming tomorrow. Uh, this was the project that we did for the Memorial Day Parade Committee. So there's the labor of our works. If you look around, I think they captured, you know, original themes and ideas what Memorial Day means to them. So I was really happy to see that we got those up. We're able to get those up. Um, we also uh, are ready to go uh, for the parade on the 26th of May. Uh, we have. Uh, we have 15 first responders who either uh, are with the police or fire department that will be honored as parade marshals that will go with the theme, those that have served our country as well as our community. Um, our essay contest winner is Gabriela Santos, at the eighth grader at the Silas Dean Middle School. She has been uh, called and she was thrilled about that whole That's great. Uh, Award. Our guest speaker is going to be retired Colonel John Wiltz. Um, he will be speaking at the cemetery. The uh, news releases have gone out. Um, attempts have been made to do a feature story on this year's event. Um, so we're really, you know, excited and uh, honoring those that have served. So I think we have some good energy on the committee. Sounds like a good thing. We'll be marching. Meeting, meeting place still motor vehicle department. Motor vehicle. 8.30 was it? Um, 8.30. 8.30. Parade starts at 9. That's what I thought. Okay, Diane. Um, two things. Um, safe graduation is fast approaching and we will be posting our link for our um, volunteer website. So if anyone wants to volunteer for that, we'd really appreciate it. And um, on behalf of SafeGrad, I'd like to thank all the businesses and citizens in town because we've raised um, approximately $60,000 for the event wow. this year. Diane, that's great. Um, that's amazing. The community was, was very generous. And the last thing, it, um, I wanted to pass this on, if I can maybe get a copy of it. Um, I came across this, the Granby Public School System has a, what they call a Summer Enrichment, enrichment Academy. Um, Several people I work with were telling me about this and brought me this brochure. But it really, it's, it's kind of along the lines of the, what we do during the year with the Keen program. But it has, um, and I guess it's pretty self-supporting from what they've told me. But they have different courses for grade school readiness, getting ready for first, second, third grade, getting ready for middle school, language arts. They have some stuff for high school kids about college exploration, um, robotics, those types of things. Um, so many kids during the summer kind of just hang out, but um, I thought it was a pretty interesting program, and I think some, there's some other communities that are also doing something like this during the summer, so maybe student program and services yeah, can absolutely. take a look at it. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Diane. Holly? I just had a quick comment on the um, uh, the Friday update. I, I, uh, I know I've mentioned this before, but um, 
This, these reports from the schools are just getting better and better. We have some wonderful pictures, um, and uh, there's nothing like pictures of, <laughs> of the kids to break up the, um, the uh, descriptions. And um, it's, they're just so well put together. And, uh, and also, I really appreciate the fact that um, you know, they provide us with their um, list of events, each, each school does, so that if we do have the opportunity, we can, we can attend, and, um, and that's really very helpful. So um, I know all of us try to get to as many events as we can. This is a crazy time of year, so mm -hmm. I hope that we'll get that opportunity. So I, that, uh, teach, or the principals who were here have left, but I would love you to pass that on, sir. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, it's interesting, Paul. We're on the same wavelength here. I wanted to comment on those two because they they do they've gotten better and better. And um, the board so appreciates being informed mm -hmm. of all the events. And I also all of us understand the work and commitment that goes into each one from the administration and the staff. Also, I found it very interesting about the STEAM activities that were available for the families. Um, the board is most impressed with the turnout from the families as the schools work to include science, technology, engineering, art, and math into fascinating activities for the families to work on together. So again, thank you for all those who organize and work those events. And finally, I wanted to give a shout out to all the students who will be taking the SBACs. These assessments are only one way that the system looks at our students. But just like any other activity or sport that a student participates in, you should always do your best, show grit and perseverance, um, and put your best into it, and we wish you all good luck. And we don't have Justin with us tonight, so we don't know what's going on at that so high school. Mm. All right, may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all and good night. Thank you.